Hello and welcome to season two of Better Congo. I'm sure you guys aren't expecting to see me, but I am Nadia Ike, Ghanaian athlete, founder and CEO of Accelerate and your fabulous host for season two. Better Combo is proudly sponsored by Athletics Africa and collaboration with Accelerate. And our aim really here is to provide athletes the platform to share their stories and facilitate the process for them to brand themselves as more than just the sport. On today's season opener, we are excited to be joined by the wonderful Hafsa Kamara, Sierra Leonean Olympic sprinter and all around amazing woman. Hi guys. Hafsa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really can't wait to dive into who you are beyond the sport and what you're working on. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, it's a pleasure to see you on this screen. I've seen you on the track. I've seen you outside. But I'm really excited to you know sit down and get to talk to you and get the world to see you as who you are beyond the track. So before we dive into it and dive into everything, why don't you just give us a little bit of a background and who you are um, and really pretty much just telling us, you know, what people don't know about Hafsa. Okay, well, thank you for having me. I'm really excited about, you know, being able to share my story and tell everyone what's been going on. Um, so my name is Hafsa Kamar and I am a track and field Olympian for Sierra Leone. Um, you guys should all know this is Athletics Africa where Sierra Leone is located. We need to know our African country. <laughs> but um, if you don't know, it's a, it's a small country in West Africa and, um, been competing as a professional athlete for Sierra Leone since 2012, long time. Um, competed in World Kent Championships, uh, Commonwealth Games, uh, Rio Olympics, and now, as everyone else, preparing for Tokyo 2021. Um, you know, just doing the best we can in the situation that we currently are. But of course, you know, it's. I'm not just a one-sided athlete. I'm also a digital marketer. I work in uh, digital marketing, providing people with, writing brands and businesses with the voice that they need in order to um, reach their target audience and their target goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Um, so before we dive into before we dive into what you do beyond the sport, right? Yeah. Just just a little bit of a background in terms of you know you've been at the Olympics, you've been at World Championships, and everything like that. And for you, what was what has been your driving force in staying connected to the sport and staying in the sport? Um, when I first started off, uh, I don't. I would say it was more so personal goals. I feel like my personal goals was what I really got into the sport and thought of taking it professionally. But keeping me in the sport is the fact that um, you know I've been put in a position as a role model as mm -hmm. someone who's able to um, show, showing the young, the youth of Sierra Leone, doors are open for us as athletes, doors are open for us as student athletes, doors are open for us as professionals in this world. So being a role model and being able to navigate the path in which others can, you know, it can be easier for them is what's keeping me in this sport as long as I've been there. Because it's, you, you know, it's hard. It's hard for us, but um, someone has to do it. And I, you know, feel like it's, being as long as I've been in here, uh, just taking that responsibility to do the best that I can to leave the sport as an African athlete better than um, when I got into it. Right, and so and so along with those goals, I guess for you, what are your goals for next year? So next year is, you know, like fingers crossed that <laughs> competing at Tokyo 2021, um, definitely a goal and also having for us to have our African uh, championships mm -hmm. as well. So um, athletic wise, those are goals reaching those marks. Cause for mm -hmm. us, it's all about those major championships. Mm -hmm. um, and then on a scale, as far as the Sierra Leone team, being able to execute a relay, you know, we have the women we have the, the numbers, we have the talent um, just being in that position. So we actually can execute a four by one, a four by four relay. Right. Um, more as a team than just as an individual. Right. And what do you think is going to take? I mean, we for us, smaller countries, smaller African countries with smaller team and smaller developments. What do you think it's going to take for us to get to the next level? Um, for I, your experience? Yeah. So I, I what I've noticed a lot um, with those bigger countries like, you know, in the U.S. and uh, the U.K. is that there is a form of 
community and togetherness, not just within like the the bodies that are um, that are supporting the athletes and presenting these opportunities, but also the the families, the um, the, the support systems out there too, because um, you'll see like oftentimes for like U.S. teams, like it's not just them going to the competition with their coaches, you'll see their family members and support system coming along and being aware of what's going on. So having our countries within our communities supporting us, our athletes towards these goals um, right. and letting them see that it's not just, uh, it's not just the, uh, you know, like it's actual, there's actual benefits of what we are sitting here doing towards yeah. having, um, professionals within the sports that opens doors for young girls that opens doors for um for health uh improvements and opens doors for uh in investments in education yeah it's not, it stops at playing a sport right and i think i think i mean you hit it on the on the nail on the head i think the the challenge for us on the continent is that you know people look at sports as just an activity right mm -hmm. but sports is currency if you look globally yeah. sports is the only thing that it's influencing everything it influences culture it influences entertainment it influences mm -hmm. money it influences everything but somehow on the continent that kind of gets lost along the way and i think that it's a matter of our generation um taking that that initiative to mm -hmm. to create platforms like this where you know people are seeing what athletes are doing and hearing what athletes are doing beyond the sport so i mean you're right you're right up there and i and i 100 percent agree and in terms of you know the, the challenges that you know come with pursuing this path that no one else is doing obviously there are financial mm -hmm. challenges right mm -hmm. so for you in training how are you funding your training? Is it just you working or you do have sponsorship and stuff? So um, it's a combination of both. Um, we we do have the some sponsorship that comes from the country, um, but you know, it's it only able to like cover just a, a certain amount. Um, but for the rest, I actually do work, like I mentioned before, as a digital marketer. Um, and then also find sponsorships through like Fabletics um, which is a clothing brand, um, and then other small sponsorships that will like, you know, for certain uh, vitamin companies, um, certain exercise brands. Um, but, you know, most of my funding comes from me working as a digital marketer, uh, which is a, for me, it's not only a passion, but also fits really well within my athletic career, because mm -hmm. it's something I can do from home on the road um, and anywhere and still be able to accomplish whatever I need to do. Right. And and how did the pandemic affect, well, I guess your training and work, how did it affect you in that way? So it did the complete opposites for both. Um, so as far as your training, we would think like as track and field, we're already outside, like it shouldn't be a problem. But, you know, a lot of the pandemic basically caused like our whole schedule completely gone, disappeared. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, training was gone. Everything is gone. So we basically um, this past season had to find ways to modify and keep replicate what a season would look like if we actually did have one, um, doing the best that we can. We we're holding uh, practice meets at, um, with our training group, like a week long, uh, like basically a triathlon type thing. We we're doing long jump. We were doing uh, 60 sprints. We were doing different events, just trying to keep it, keep some type of uh competition level going. Um, and then for work, I actually became very busy because the pandemic caused a lot of businesses to then focus on their digital uh, presence. And that meant those who were working within that field had to then uh, either pick up clients or modify their clients to make sure that like they're still reaching their target on and still trying to get, if not all, but at least half of the numbers that they were getting um, before the pandemic. Um, so it Work got busy and track slowed down. <laughs> and in terms of balancing the two, how, how has that been for you uh, with work being busier than usual and then you know, track kind of taking a step back? How has that been balancing the two? Um, it was in the beginning, it was a very weird balance because it left so much room for me to really explore, okay, who am I other than an athlete, mm. you know? Because so much time, our, so much of our schedule is dependent on our track life. You know, like when 
I'm in training season, when I start competing, when I need uh, recovery, even your day-to-day uh, work. So now it's like, okay, I, I get to, to be me. Um, well, me as far as real, uh, the regular life without having to worry so much about when am I going to be on a plane to, to go somewhere. So it really, uh, the time flat, okay, where do I want to go outside of track? Mm-hmm. Because before the job was to support the track, my track career. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, this is this is this is life. This could be my life after I retire. So how do I function and move through that? Now that I have the opportunity to really think of it, so it was finding a balance within my day, being really disciplined within it. Because you can be disciplined in track, but in regular life, it's like because it just fit into the track. So now it's like, that's the main thing. So finding ways to be more disciplined in that aspect. Right, right. And I think, I mean, I think as speaking as an, you know, an athlete myself, I think yeah. it's actually easier when you're doing life after you've done track. I don't know yeah. if it is, for you, but for me, I found, I find it much easier to do life than track. Um, that being said, I do think that the pandemic shed light on a lot of athletes who didn't really have a plan for life beyond the sport. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I think everyone was at a standstill and for people that didn't really have anything beyond the sport, it was kind of like, what am I supposed to do? So there are a lot of athletes who are kind of lost in what they want to do. And my question to you is in terms of your, you know, getting onto that digital marketing landscape, is that something that you did in college? How did you get your foot in? Yeah. So the crazy thing is actually in college, I majored in, um, graduated with a major in exercise science, so kinesiology. So it's completely, what I thought was completely different um, actually isn't as much because there's a level of creativity, of of curiosity, of exploration that you need in order to um, understand how the body moves and how it functions and increase in performance that I realized I have that would benefit me, that benefits me in um, digital marketing. You know, I like to understand what a brand's mission is, what a brand's uh, voice is. I like to understand um, the avenues they would need to take to get to those goals, what their audience is thinking, um, and doing a lot of research. So those are things that uh, that I was able to take from what I learned in school and then transform it into one of the passions that just came about because honestly, I was looking for a job where I can just travel and still get paid. And that's what I initially sought out to look for. <laughs> I just want to be on my computer after practice. I don't want to go stand anywhere. I just, I just want to be able to just come home from practice and just be able to make my money. But then, um, as I learned with one of my mentors, Chelsea Sutton, she taught me the ins and outs of marketing. And, you know, my passion grew for it um, to the point, you know, I started doing my own research, started educating myself to where now, uh, you know, I have a couple clients all over the, all over the uh, country. And it's it's definitely opened doors for me to do more and expand it and show my skills in marketing and how to really motivate the, the youths in Sierra Leone. Cause my passion mm-hmm. is, is the youth and um, especially the young girls and okay. giving them a purpose to understand that it's, you know, it's more than just being, uh, you know, someone's wife, more than just being someone's mom, that you can actually have these roles and mm-hmm. accomplish the dreams that, you know, your parents didn't even have as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I completely identify with that. I think as women, black women, African mm-hmm. women, mm-hmm. globally, um, we constantly have to work twice as hard um, yeah. to prove that we deserve to be in certain spaces. And in some cases for us as athletes, sports gives us the voice. It gives mm-hmm. us the ability to have the voice to and confidence to pursue mm-hmm. those things. And so I think for all of us female athletes, it's always on our part to you know, to make sure we're doing our part to empower the next generation of females. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I absolutely see that. But we're gonna go on a quick break, and yeah. when we do come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about you know how this digital marketing is going to take you to the next phase of your life beyond the sport. And so, when we come back, we'll be talking about that. Yeah.
Welcome back to season one of, I mean, season two of episode one um, with Hafsa Kamara on Beta Convo. We're here talking about Hafsa, who she is as an athlete on the field and beyond the field. Um, a little before we went on our break, she was telling us about how she has a, di a digital marketing career and how that's going. And so Hafsa, um, so just going back to your digital marketing career, how do you see that, you know, building beyond where you are now, something that came out of a need for, you know, having flexibility? How do you see that, you know, the next five, 10 years of your career after the sport is over? So for um, what I'm doing now, I my goal is to have it expand to just myself, um, creating an actual business in the sense of teaching others about digital marketing. Because mm -hmm. um, what I've seen is that it's, it's a field where it's necessary. Everyone has social media. Everyone, you know, has an email address. I mean, you, you're in elementary school and you have your own email address. Mm -hmm. So having the youth be ready for a workforce that's going to prepare, like have them know what a digital platform looks like. Because now it's not just your resume that yeah. you're putting in. You're also putting in your social presence because all that matters now. Um, so creating, I created a program called Branding Program, which is teaching high schoolers and college students um, the skills behind digital marketing, what their social presence needs to look like if applying for a job, if they're interested in being entrepreneurs, whether whatever their passion is, how that looks like, what messaging is, what um, attracting your audience is. Mm -hmm. So that is the, 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 what my passion has led to is actually um, giving back and nurturing the youth in a mm -hmm. way where they'll be ready for the changes that we're currently experiencing mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And not just as far as the US, but definitely um, in countries like Sierra Leone where, you know, oftentimes it seems as if we're behind. You know, we're constantly playing catch up, whether it's five or 10 years behind. I mean, like having even consistent electricity, you know, being able to, to have your lights on constantly is something that we're still trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. So being able to un like prepare the youths in Sierra Leone for a workforce where they need to be digitally savvy. They need to understand um, social presence, they need to understand email, they need to understand that uh, what you do online, it does reflect who you are as a person. So encompassing that with the youth education in Sierra Leone and not just within the books and taking exams, but also having a presence online. Right, and so for, athletes who are watching right now, right? What is your one tip in terms of building that brand um, using technology, so to speak, to build your brand? What is your one tip from your expert's advice book? <laughs> so um, one tip is something that I had to learn myself um, as I was getting, putting together my own social pr um, presence is that not every brand that reaches out to you is for you. Understand that you don't have to pick up every single request, every single demand. Um, figure out who you are as a person, what is it that you represent, and then uh, be okay with saying, no, this is not within my look. This is not within the brand of what I'm trying to pursue. Um, especially now because influencer marketing is huge. It's not going anywhere. It's basically the new commercial marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so they're gonna, you. As an athlete, they want you're and you're pursuing the Olympics. You're already in the spotlight that they're trying to capture. But understand, you are the one they're trying to capture in not the opposite way. You know, so be able to choose wisely on who it is that you're representing because it all does matter in the long run. Because you want to be consistent with it. You want to have a passion for it, mm -hmm. and that's what will lead you to doing more things, whether with that brand but with bigger brands as well. Right. And but then at the same time, in someone else's defense, you know. Mm -hmm in track and field at least i don't know yeah. about sports in track and field there really isn't a lot of money no. Right? no and so you don't really have the luxury of picking and choosing you know which brand to align yourself with right and so how how can you know people be i mean athletes at least in the track and field world be more strategic about that brand alignment yeah. because given that there's not a lot of money in the sport yes so what something that you can there's two things that you can do so um equipping like partnering with platforms that actually are connecting brands with um influencers with athletes so there's one brand called open sponsor one uh yeah. business called open sponsorship now, have you been on the platform or do you i haven't used it but i know it yeah i know open sponsorship 
Yeah. So I've used it when I first started as far as um, doing partnerships with brands and other way. Um, that's what the platform I use. And uh, it's specifically for athletes. So that's the other thing. And then it has criteria where it's set up as far as, um, you know, uh, gender, uh, the target audience, locations, then that will connect you with the brand that, you know, fits who you are. Um, there's different brands, obviously, as well, that will help you navigate through that. And you're not talking directly to the brand. They're putting you there. You're getting the email like, hey, this brand looks interested in who you are, your profile, and what you have going on. That's a good way. Also, um, create an uh, influencer or athlete's uh, resume. Mm -hmm. so you have your reg regular resume for your job, have an athlete resume as well that lists your accomplishments. Also list what is it that you're potentially going for. If it's 2021 Olympics, if it's um, the African championships, if it's in, um, if it's anything, whether major or small, they wanna see those things like where what your uh, span is headed towards. List, um, your passions, list your community service aspects that you're that you're part of or currently been in the past or currently doing, but make sure that your athlete resume is also present. And those are things that you can uh, email to brands. So don't be afraid to send out those emails, like because they're <laughs> sometimes you you they probably aren't aware that you're in their radar, but you're yeah. definitely the person that they need. So send those emails, uh, send it to the customer info most of the time, and say this is directly for a brand sponsorship potential. So have an athlete's resume and um, connect with brand platforms that will just make it easy for you to talk to brands. Yeah, I absolutely I mean, I absolutely see that. I think that I do think, however, though, that there's there there's this two sides to branding, right? There's one yeah. side that everyone always thinks of, which is the social media influencer path, mm -hmm. right? And then there's another part, which is your wholesome brand, right? Mm -hmm. And for me as an athlete, speaking from personal experience, I've spent more time building my wholesome brand. Who mm -hmm. am I mm -hmm. uh, beyond the sport? And how can I gain strategic partnerships with that brand? Mm -hmm. Not so much, you know, what is my Instagram story saying? Yeah. It's really, who am I when I walk in a room? And what, what missions am I aligned with? And how can I create partnerships that are aligned mm -hmm. with? those things. Um, and so I, I, I think that it's it's crucial to balance the two out because every time we talk about branding and you're in the digital, the digital marketing space, so it makes yeah. sense that yeah. that's what we're talking about. But I just want to also be clear because athletes, as soon as you say branding, athletes think about Instagram. Yeah. And there's way, <laughs> there's way more to that than Insta, you know, than the influencer side. And, you know, like when I think about, even when we go to meets and people, yeah me i know at meets like it's been a priority to connect with people mm -hmm. you know people tell them about the things that i'm working on tell them about who i am as a person and i think that a lot of times athletes spend so much time building that social media presence that they're not building that real life presence where you walk into a space and you're talking to people you're meeting people you're knowing people and so that's a piece that i always want to throw in there but mm -hmm. i'm glad that you you talked about the um, personal resume as well you're definitely right because, um, you know, just you're, you're a people person. That's something you do naturally. You'll spark conversations and you don't even think of it afterwards once you've already gotten their information because that's that's natural. But for someone who's not used to doing that and just being able to it's network, but it's really forming relationships. Right. So even when you're traveling on a plane and you're going to uh, you're going to one of your track meets, most of the time people recognize that you're an athlete, like especially if you're all in your athlete gear, they're going to ask questions. So we tend to be like, okay, I don't want to talk to anyone, but you never know who you're sitting next to you who can help you know support you to your path. I've had many times with people on the plane where it's like, hey, you can you can follow me. Here's my email. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, and that, like you're saying, that all is that all is in branding is making sure that you know the conversations that you're having um, online also match the conversations that you're having in person. And don't be afraid. Something I had to get used to is telling people, yes, I'm an athlete. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's like with track and field, it it might be hard to show where like the professionals are when you compare it to other sports mm -hmm. as compared to, you know, being amateur. But we are professionals. You look at the time that you're putting in, you look at the effort that you're putting in, you are a professional. You know, talk to yourself as you're a professional or present yourself as a professional and 
you're going to open doors and opportunities within those conversations that you're having when you're uh, you're saying I'm a professional. Right, right. And I, I 100% agree with you. Personally, I, 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 I went through a phase where I kind of didn't always share that I was an athlete just mm -hmm. out of fear of being limited to just being that. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I do think that there are clearly transferable skills that come mm -hmm. in being an athlete and you've been able to successfully do that and, you know, transfer the skill sets that you've gained from the field onto, you know, your career path and everything that you're doing. So congratulations to you. That's very impressive. Um, before we do close, though, I do want to ask another question. Mm -hmm. and what are what are some of the challenges that you're facing right now in terms of whether it be within your career, within the sport? What are some of the challenges that, you know, come up the top of your head? Um, I would say one of the top of my head is like, kind of not like I would for me I, I'll just talk about personal it's more of a personal challenge um when is when have I satisfied my goals as far as an athlete mm -hmm. um and also understanding like for me competing is not where it ends for me as far as my relationship to um to track and field to my sport and navigating how it is it that I'm going to transfer that form of competition into more of a um, support role, more of a leadership role within the Sierra Leone's like track and field mm -hmm. organization, within the Sierra Leone sports, not just track, but sports organization. So that's been more of my personal challenge in understanding like, okay, kind of getting to terms with the fact that, okay, I can't, you know, this, I can't be lifting these weights all the time <laughs> for years to come, but I have to replace that space with something that's gonna still have the same drive, the same passion, mm -hmm. the same, focus, but it might just have to be for supporting someone else's dreams. Right. Um, so working within that space and navigating that has been, yeah. And, and who is helping you navigate that? How are you navigating that? So I'm speaking to um, a couple like past former athletes and also current athletes who are still in the sport, but uh, kind of, you know, on their way out, I have one of my mentors, um, Tori Stegge. Yeah, she got recently got married. I think that's her last, her new last name. <laughs> Um, so Tori, who's a last name was Polk, who's a, a long jumper for the team and has been a mentor for me like some years before and gave them a race plan, uh, but more so like a retirement plan, you know, and uh, how that can can look, especially while keeping a presence within the sport. Uh, so it's good. And like you said, it's good that you asked as far as who's helping you navigate that. Having mentors, <laughs> you need to have mentors, not just in the sport, but in life, because we didn't, none of us came out with a plan book on how this life is supposed to go, but some of us are a little bit more advanced or ahead than the others. And you can't just be sitting in the back like, okay, I'll just sit and watch. Okay, I don't know. You need to talk, you need to find someone who inspires you or who, you know, just seems to like be in the area that you want to be and have those conversations, find mentors, not just talking yeah. about track and field, but talking about, okay, how do I get my finances together? Yeah. Okay. How do I prepare for this role? How do I talk to so-and-so? Cause yeah. it's not just this, our sport is amazing, but it's not here forever. You know, you're not in the sport forever. So being able to have mentors in all fields that you are currently um, in. Right. And and I'm glad you said that because, you know, the, the strange thing about track and field, which is unlike any other sport, right, is the only sport, I think, I don't know if other individual sports are the same, so don't quote me on this, but I think at least in track and field, there's a certain level of elitism that's within the sport where almost like people who may be better than you in terms of on paper, right, mm -hmm. are... <laughs> automatically assume that being better than you in the sport translates into real life in terms of career. Mm. So there's a lot of people that, you know, I could potentially help on the career path, but just because on paper they have a better performance than I do, they may mm. not even, you know, ask me for the support that they need mm. to get their career off the ground outside of the sport. Whereas yeah. I think in other sports, it's almost like we're all good. We're all pro. Yes. Doing other things, anybody who can help me can help me. I don't care whether you're, run a faster time or a slower time. Yeah. Track and field, I find that there's a lot of elitism. And, you know, I think that has held us back because it, it prevents transparency in the sport. Yeah. So nobody knows what anyone is really worth, but everyone's yeah. acting like they're worth so much. Yes. <laughs> no, I, no, I agree. I definitely agree. It, it's, it, 
<laughs> it keeps, it keeps you in a bubble, not realizing when I take off my spikes. Trust me, I'm a boss. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I can do. I can, I'm multitasking. Like, come on. Yeah. You're definitely, definitely yeah. right. And I think it also comes with the parameters that Track and Field has set up, where it's kind of like because only certain people have those big brand sponsorships. They think like, okay, that's it. They're set. Not realizing like that's not all that like is that's not all that it's there. Like that's also moment like just for the moment. That's only temporary as far as how that's supposed to last. Right. But there's life afterwards, you know? Right, right, right. And that's and I think and I think I mean grateful for you being here. I think the point of you know a platform like this is to start getting the story out, start getting mm -hmm. people to see that you know athletes are more than just the sport we're more than just our numbers we're more than just ranks you know there's i'm i'm hoping that this session provides somebody with the opportunity to connect with you um connect with me and you know learn something outside of what they're doing and expand their network as well but before we do close though <laughs> you knew this was coming yes before we do close you know this has been a very great conversation but i've heard um, word on the street is you have some killer dance moves and so <laughs> I'm going to ask you what your favorite dance move is as an African we cannot close without doing something that's you know okay so for us for Sierra Leoneans I would say it's more we're more with the hips you know we, we are, we're jiving with the hips that's that that ain't my go-to you know but you know, I definitely venture into the the other the other the other you know nation dance moves. <laughs> I'll just say that I venture into it. I can definitely show you the shoulder. That's it, the shoulder. <laughs> I, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. But yeah. I, I, I mean, it's been incredible, Hassa. Thank you so much for your time. It's Thank really you. been a pleasure. Um, I'm glad we got to connect. I'm glad we got to talk, and I'm glad we got the continent to get a glimpse into your life. Um, it's really yeah. been a pleasure. I, I, I wish you the best success, the most success in everything that you're doing. And, you know, see you on the track. <laughs> yeah. See you soon. Definitely. Thank you so much. No problem. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Um, stay tuned for next week's episode. Same time right here. If you haven't done, all, if you haven't done so already, Follow Athletics Africa on Instagram. Follow Accelerate now on Instagram for more content. And if you enjoy the session and want to continue the conversation, please feel free to continue the chat below. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what you guys think. But thank you so much for today. It's been real.